Meanwhile, Yemenis are recovering after a barrage of U.S. drone strikes that killed 38 suspected militants in the country. A strike on Saturday was the ninth attack in two weeks. And uh, one of those attacks may in fact have killed one of the most dangerous terrorists in the world, that being Ibrahim al-Asiri. He is the master bomb maker for al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula. He is the man that is behind the attempted assassination of a top Saudi counterterrorism official in 2009. He's also behind the failed Christmas Day underwear bomber attack, as well as terror plots involving two cargo planes in 2010. Now, U.S. officials say that this man, the one that you are looking at, is the reason that you go through all of those invasive security screening and pat-down processes at the airport, and they are afraid that he is passing his craft on to others. Now, if the drone attack was in fact successful, this would be a catastrophic blow to al-Qaeda. But we simply don't know if it was or if he actually died. Yemen remains a focus for Washington after terrorist threat information prompted the U.S. State Department to close a number of embassies and consulates across the Middle East and Africa earlier this month. All uh, still, we just don't know if there was anything. These embassies have all opened. We don't know if there's anything that was related between some of these threats and these closings. To talk all things Yemen, I'm joined now by Yemen analyst Sama Al Hamdani, and she also writes the blog uh, Yemeniyet.com. Uh, and Cora Courier, she's from ProPublica, and she can illuminate us on the U.S. policy on these strikes. So thank you guys so much for joining us. Um, let's start with you. Talk about the significance of these drone strikes. Does it have an effect on how Yemenis view the U.S.? Absolutely. Um, I think in the past 10 days, there have been uh, about eight drone strikes, um, nine, nine drone strikes right now. Um, and what's happening is I'm seeing Yemenis hate America more and more. I, and I'm talking about Yemenis who actually went outside of Yemen, know about America, have studied America at some point. We just don't understand why the country has to be droned um, eight times in 10 days. I think a lot of people are scared. They're speaking out of fear. Uh, they don't know what to expect next from the U.S. Now, Cora, what do we know about the 38 Yemenis killed in these strikes? They're called suspected militants by the Obama administration. Um, but what do we really know about their links to terrorism? Well, it's important to note that they're called suspected militants generally by uh, officials off the record, sort of anonymous comments. We rarely, rarely ever get official acknowledgement uh, that the U.S. was even involved in a strike, that it was a U.S. drone strike as opposed to a Yemeni uh, airstrike, for example. Um, so you really, in terms of official numbers, you don't get anything from the U.S. government. Uh, what we do have is, is pulled together from these off-the-record uh, comments and by, from the on-the-ground work of, of journalists and, and activists increasingly in Yemen. And, Sama, the interesting thing is that despite President Obama having promises to have more transparency, here in the U.S. we have really not seen very much. But you have an interesting perspective because you can provide both the American perspective and the Yemeni perspective. Are they getting any more information coming out about these strikes? I actually have to follow U.S. media when I'm reading about drone strikes. Um, when the drone strikes happened, Yemeni media didn't cover it at all. There was um, an award handed out to, you know, people who can catch or capture any of the Al-Qaeda people. It was only broadcasted on Yemeni television at 9 p.m. Then it was uh, mainly on American and English news websites. And I feel like a lot of Yemenis don't really know what's going on. Why is that? Don't they have interest in what's going on? I mean, if something yeah. was happening in the back of uh, our neighborhoods, we would know. Well, they want to know. They want to know. But there's a lack of transparency from the government. When the first drone strikes started, um, I mean, in the past 10 days, the Yemeni president was actually here in Washington, D.C., meeting with President Barack Obama. And so the Yemeni people until now didn't have a Yemeni official come and speak to them on national television, calming them down or letting them know what's going on. And Cora, as I had mentioned, President Obama promised some type of transparency. Have we seen any of that involving these most recent strikes or anything in the, few, um, in the present days of him actually following through with that promise? Well, the administration's now tending to speak more openly about the broad program of targeted killing. They, you know, in the big, uh, President Obama's big speech in May, he laid out the sort of new guidelines, um, indicated that there were now going to be stricter criteria for when uh, a drone strike could be taken. 
Um, but just in recent days, again, we've sort of retreated to the tendency that most of the details that we get about what's going on in Yemen are coming in sort of uh, off the record of, uh, statements from officials. The president was asked on Friday about the uptick in drones and his uh, in drone strikes in Yemen, and his response is, "Well, I can't discuss specific operational issues." So that tends to be the response. I've been uh, trying to track pretty closely what happens after uh, civilian deaths are alleged uh, in Yemen, given that this is, again, another area in which uh, the administration promised greater transparency. And generally, again, they will talk generally about it. Um, they've said that there's now a standard for near certainty, that no civilian will be harmed in, the, in a strike. But after the fact, uh, they generally refuse to comment on any particular strike. Now, Samal, one of the reasons that they were, uh, that we believed that they were really going after Yemen was because of Ibrahim al-Samiri, uh, which is what I mentioned, um, uh, Assyria, excuse me, is which is what I mentioned earlier. But was there any kind of confirmation that we know of them, them targeting? How can we really know if he is dead or alive? Um, at the moment, I don't think we're going to get that. I think we have to wait until the end of August because a lot of the bodies tend to be charred when they're uh, droned. Uh, so... We're going to have to wait to see who the people are. I know that there are 36 uh, casualties from these drone strikes. I don't know if all of them are going to be AQIP. Odds are there are a lot of casualties in there. And can you elaborate on how the people of Yemen view this man, the master bomb maker? I don't think they view AQAP as a big um, as a big terror threat in Yemen itself because Yemenis, um, more than 60% of the population is living under the poverty line. There's sectarian uh, problems going on in the region. The country, uh, half the country may secede. So when it comes to AQAP, they're not really operating in Yemen. They're not, um, at the moment, they're not the biggest threat in the eyes of the Yemeni people. Very interesting. Now, Cora, your news outlet, ProPublica, tried to uh, determine whether the U.S. was giving out condolence payments to families of innocent victims of drones strikes in general and also more specifically of these Yemeni strikes. Um, this is the response that you got from a Freedom of Information Act request that you sent out. It says, U.S. Army Major General Carl Horst responded, a thorough and good faith search was conducted and 33 pages were located. After a thorough review, I have determined that the information is exempt from release in its entirety. So are there any other ways of determining whether these payments are being made and are you happy with this response or are you planning to appeal it? Well, the DOD also told me that they just, they told me straight out, a spokesman told me that they are not making, uh, that the DOD has not made uh, condolence payments in Yemen. Uh, or I actually asked also about Somalia, given that not, not very recently, but there have been U.S. direct actions in Somalia. So they've told me just straight out that they're not doing it there. Um, that contrast directly with what CIA director John Brennan said in February in front of uh, during his confirmation process he said that the US does where appropriate for strikes outside of Afghanistan will will sometimes offer condolence payments it was not a very specific statement he said it um, in his confirmation process we don't know whether he was referring uh, to the CIA it could have been referring to Pakistan um, there's little on the ground evidence that these payments are actually happening. They've, they, they're, they've now become embraced as a tool in Afghanistan. They've been widely used there. Um, nearly a million dollars in last year, in fiscal year 2012, were given out for roughly 300 payments. Um, so, and, and really what those, what those payments also brought in Afghanistan was a way in which when you you would get a sense of these both the scale of civilian injury and the relationship between the civilian population and and US soldiers um, we obviously don't have soldiers on the ground in Yemen that makes for a different situation sure and as you go forward with this we are, um, are asking you to keep us informed so that we can keep our audience informed of everything that ProPublica is trying to do in terms of this FOIA request uh, Cora Courier a national security correspondent with uh, ProPublica and also Sama Al Hamdani she's a Yemeni analyst and the creator of the website YemeniAT.com thank you so much thank you thanks